Jung's Theory of Personality It must be noted from the outset that Carl Jung was considered Sigmund Freud's protégé. In fact, Freud saw the young Jung to be his heir, who will continue promoting his new science of psychoanalysis. Indeed, Jung was an early supporter of Freud's psychoanalysis. Jung even became president of the International Psychoanalytical Association at the request of Freud. However, during his 1912 lecture tour in the United States, Jung publicly criticized Freud's theory of the Oedipus complex and his emphasis on infantile sexuality, which resulted in a split between them. In fact, most of the assumptions in Jung's model of analytical psychology reflect his theoretical differences with Freud. Jung then went on to develop his own version of psychoanalytical theory and establish his own analytical psychology as a comprehensive system separate from Freud's psychoanalysis. Freud versus Jung Let me briefly sketch the main differences between Freud and Jung's theory of personality before I discuss Jung's theory of personality. On the one hand, Freud focuses more on the unconscious mind and its direct connection to one's suppressed thoughts and primal human drives, such as sex, violence, and aggression. For Freud, therefore, the unconscious is a storehouse of unacceptable repressed desires specific to the individual. It is also important to note that the human psyche for Freud is divided into three components, namely, the id, the ego, and the superego. According to Freud, the id is connected to our unconscious drives, the ego is linked to our conscious experiences, and the superego mediates our behavior by balancing the impulses of the id and the ego. For a detailed discussion on Freud's model of psychoanalysis, please see our video lecture on Freud's five stages of psychosexual development. See description below for the link. On the other hand, Jung acknowledges Freud's notion of the unconscious mind, but focuses more on the individual's lived experiences and future aspirations. Hence, contra Freud, Jung views the unconscious mind as a storehouse of repressed memories specific to the individual and her ancestral past. Indeed, Jung departs from Freud by conceptualizing the idea of a collective consciousness. In fact, among the central concepts of Jung's model of psychoanalysis or psychoanalytical theory is individuation, that is, the lifelong psychological process of differentiation of the self out of each individual's conscious and unconscious elements. This explains why Jung developed the important concepts of collective unconscious, synchronicity, introversion, extroversion, archetypal phenomena, and psychological complex. Jung's Theory of Personality Let me now briefly sketch the key concepts of Jung's theory of personality. Structure of the Mind Jung's view of the structural nature of personality clearly reflected a redefined, expanded view of the unconscious mind. The conscious ego is the center of conscious awareness of the self. The major functions of the conscious ego are to make the individual aware of his or her internal processes, for example, thoughts or feelings of pain, and the external world, for example, surrounding noises, through sensations and perceptions at a level of awareness necessary for day-to-day -day functioning, for example. A motorist recalls the alternate route for driving into town due to traffic problems ahead. Directly next to the conscious ego, and completely below conscious awareness, Jung proposed the personal unconscious region of the mind. The contents of the personal unconscious included all those thoughts, memories, and experiences that were momentarily not being thought about and or repressed because they were too emotionally threatening. Important elements in the personal unconscious are what Jung described as complexes. For Jung, a complex is a collection of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and memories that center around a particular concept. 
the more elements attached to the complex, the greater its influence on the individual. For example, complexes associated with religion and politics oftentimes tend to have a rather strong influence on the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of individuals committed to a particular ideology. The influence of the personal unconscious also includes a prospective and compensatory function. The prospective function served to help the individual look into the future, for example, aspirational thinking and setting of goals. According to Jung, the compensatory function of the personal unconscious helps individuals to balance out at an unconscious level the conscious aspects of personality being ignored, for example, a shy person may dream of being the life of the party. While the personal unconscious is unique to each individual, the collective unconscious is conceptualized as being transpersonal in nature. The transpersonal nature of the collective unconscious reflected Jung's view that there is a region of the unconscious mind containing a collection of general wisdom that is shared by all people, has developed over time, and is passed along from generation to generation across the ages and locations around the world. Contained in the collective unconscious was a universal set of common thoughts, feelings, behaviors, beliefs, rituals, emotions, experiences, images, and symbols inherited from all of those who ever came before us over time, including animals. The principal function of this collective wisdom is to predispose individuals to respond to certain external situations in a given manner to maximize the development of the individual, for example, fear of the unknown, search for novelty, desire for social order, and need for the emotional contact with others. Thus, because these predispositions, or hereditary wisdom, are passed along from generation to generation, individuals do not need to start all over again with each new generation, making the task of survival that much easier. Jung believed all of this inherited universal knowledge was stored in the collective unconscious in the form of archetypes. Archetypes were universal thought patterns and behavior rituals triggered by specific situations and symbols and images representing certain people, ideas, or beliefs. When expressed, these archetypes provide a universal response proven to be adaptive over time and across situations. For example, when groups of humans or animals gather, there seems to be an archetype for creating social order whether that order is based on strength, knowledge, or ability, and an archetype for language, whether that language is based on bark, words, hand gestures, or music. Over time and across situations, there seems to be archetypes for believing in a higher power, for example, the sun god, Christ, Buddha, Allah, the stars, to give people hope. There are many different representations of the image for a mother archetype, for example, the Virgin Mary, the Queen Mother, Mother Nature, which create a sense of caring and comfort. In addition to these general archetypes, Jung proposed very specific archetypes representing core elements of personality. To facilitate the interaction of the sexes, the animus is the masculine side of females and the amina is the feminine side of males. The persona was the tendency for people to develop a certain pattern of behaviors when in public to get along with others, similar to Freud's superego. The shadow represents the dark and more primitive side of personality, similar to Freud's Eid. The self, the most important archetype, serves to unite all other aspects of the individual's personality, similar to Freud's ego. The Dynamics of Personality Jung viewed psychic energy as a generalized motivational source designed to help the self achieve a sense of balance. The self achieves a sense of balance within the personality by the ebb and flow of psychic energy among the various aspects of the self according to three basic principles. According to the principle of opposites, for each conscious and or unconscious reaction within the personality, there is an opposite reaction to it somewhere else within the system, for example, offset the development of an analytical side of personality at work with the seeking of more creative pursuits during times of leisure. 
According to the principle of equivalence, any psychic energy taken from one psychic structure, for example, devotion to friends, is found somewhere else in the system, for example, cramming for an exam. On the other hand, the principle of entropy states that when one aspect of the personality has a greater amount of psychic energy, for example, cramming for an exam, the energy will flow back to the weaker aspect to create a sense of balance, for example, spend extra time with friends after the exam. Personality Assessment In a word association test, the individual is given a word and asked to report the first word that comes to mind. Jung was the first individual to employ systematically the use of the word association test in the clinical setting. His principal purpose was to use it to help identify the client's problematic complexes. More specifically, by examining what words produced various types of nervous behavior, for example, stammering and or changes in respiration rate, in the client, as well as the associations themselves, Jung was able to assess the degree of emotionality of the word associations and uncover their attachment to problematic complexes. The Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, MBTI, is based on Jung's type theory concerning differences in the way individuals use perception and judgment as general orientations to their experiences. More specifically, the MBTI illustrates some of the basic differences in the ways human beings take in information and make decisions. According to Jung, there are two general types of personality attitudes by which individuals orient themselves toward their environment, namely, extroversion and introversion. The extroversion attitude is an outward orientation in which psychic energy is invested in events and objects in the external environment, for example, prefers group activities. The introverted attitude reflects an inward orientation in which psychic energy is invested in internal and more personal experiences, for example, prefers to spend time alone. While Jung believed that both types of attitudes are present within each personality, he also thought that in each person one attitude is expressed more at the conscious level than the other. Besides the two basic attitudes of personality, Jung also proposed the existence of four functions of personality, namely, 1. The sensation function, 2. The thinking function, 3. The feeling function, and 4. The intuition function. Each function is characterized by a specific orientation for understanding the events and experiences in the environment. The sensation function involves relating to the world through the senses. For example, to know something, one must be able to hear, smell, see, or feel it. The thinking function refers to the tendency to relate to the world through ideas and intellect. For example, if something is out there, what is its relation to other things? The feeling function concerns reacting to the world based on the effective quality of one's experiences with it. For example, is that something good, valuable, acceptable, harmful, or unpleasant? The intuition function goes beyond all of the other conscious functions and relies on a deeper, more internal sense of understanding. For example, although knowing what something is and how it feels, it still does not seem quite right for some strange reason. As with the two attitude types, Jung assumed that each personality possesses all four functions, but one is often expressed at a more conscious level and predominant at the expense of the others. Thus, while a feeling type person will have to see it to believe it, an intuitive type person will know by just having a gut feeling about it. 